Okay, in this video we're going to talk about a concept which is part of Oracle Forms. It's been part of Oracle Forms all the way since version 5, which is the ability to create a block in Oracle using a stored procedure. Now, in this, I'm going to use do a very, very simple demo to just to, to show how um, it works. But usually if you've got uh, either a database that's overly normalized or you've got a star schema where you're doing some fairly complex queries in order to get records, then what you want to do is instead of basing your um, block on a table, you want to, you want to use the database to create um, a data set that is then displayed. So in this example, we're going to maintain a very simple table called staff. And this is like our EMP table and other demonstrations where we create table staff. It's got an employee number, first name, last name, and a city. Now we could be, again, we could be maintaining multiple tables through this one stored procedure. But in this simple, um, in this simple example, we are just going to maintain the staff table. Now, First thing we need to do is we're going to create a package. Now, when when we talk about in Oracle Forms creating a a master block from a stored procedure, we're really doing it from a package. Um, procedures is kind of misnomer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say create or replace package, and in this case we're going to call it staff package. Now what I'm doing here is I'm declaring the staff um, the package header. Now if you're uh, not familiar with packages, every package is created with two, with two different statements. One is to create the package uh, specification, which is what we're doing here, and then the other is to create the spe package body, which contains the code that executes. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to define the data type that's going to be linked to the block. Now, just as a reminder here, when we're talking about linking a stored procedure to a block in Oracle Forms, we're not talking about any old stored procedure. There's a lot of rules that you have to follow in order to get this to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm declaring a type called staff rec which is a type of a record, and it includes those columns that I want to present. Now these are all coming from the staff table. Notice I've got staff empno, first name, last name, and city, and I'm declaring the data types to match the data types in the database by, by using the percent type identifier. So now what I've done is I've, I've declared a type called staff record, or staff rec. So now what I've got to do is I've got to use it. So what I'm going to do is declare a table. So now I've created a type called staff table, which is a PL SQL table, and it's of this data type indexed by binary integers. So now if you're not familiar with um, PL SQL tables, uh, this is, would be something to get a reference and uh, look up, do a little research on these. So, um, but what we've done is we've created a record that declares uh, a type that declares what the record looks like, and now we've created a PL SQL table. Now, inside this package, we have to do five different things. Uh, and the first thing we need to do is we need to come up with a procedure that is executed when the query is executed from within the block. So now notice that there's a lot of things that Oracle Forms does automatically for you in a table that you have to do when you're using a stored procedure. So in this case, we're creating a procedure called staff query. And it's got and the parameters to it are required to be in this format. The first is we are creating an in-out variable of the data type, the table type. So we're creating an in-out variable called pstaff table of type staff table and then we're creating p staff id which is the primary key so the primary key on here is empno so this is the field that we're going to be querying from when we execute a query so anytime a query is executed on this block we're going to execute from staff package the procedure staff query now the next thing we need to do is to tell the pl sql um, the package what are we going to do on an insert so in this case, we've got to create a function called in for, for handling the insert. And again, it is required type of definition, which in this case is an in-out variable, again, of that table type that we've defined. So now we've got our query, we've got our insert, and we're going to finish this off with the, the update, the delete, and the lock. So when an update 
occurs, we update a record, um, staff update gets called. When we delete a record, staff delete gets called. And when we start working on a record, we need to lock it. So the staff lock is called. Now, again, if, you, if you're familiar with Oracle Forms, you realize that these procedures could be multiply could be handling multiple roles rows at the same time because you could insert multiple records before you do a commit. These are fired when the commit trigger when when the commit happens within the data block. So now what we've got is we have got our package body or I mean our package definition. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create our package body. So to do that, we start with create a replace package body. Okay, now the name has to match the, def the declaration, so we have create a replace package body staff package. So now we have got to go through the process of creating each of those functions. So the first one is query, the staff query function. So I'm saying procedure staff query, it's got the same definition as it has in the declaration, and I say procedure staff query, and then the keyword is, and then let me bring in the rest of the function and talk about what it's going to do. So now what we're going to do in staff query is we're going to execute, we've got a cursor, which is basically populated, is used to populate the table. So I have a cursor called staff cursor. It's got the, um, the, uh, the function, the, the parameter that's passed into it when it's executed. So I'm going to select EMPNO, first name, last name, and city from staff, where EMPNO equals PID. Now, I'm also I'm still in the declaration section, so I'm going to declare an index, which is a number, and I'm going to set it equal to 1. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to say for I in staff cursor, loop through it, and put the record the I record, which is the reference variable, will contain the entire record. I'll put that in staff table and then I'll increment index. So all this is doing when this queries is it's going to populate P staff table and because it's an in out variable it's going to pass it back to the form. So that's my query. So the next thing I need to do is I need to create my insert. So let me bring that in. So now I've got procedure staff insert. Now I pass the table in and I declared a variable called number of rows. So all I'm doing here is I'm setting number of rows equal to the count of the table that was passed through. Then I'm looping through each one and I'm inserting into staff. So in the other functions, I'm going to do something very similar. In the update function, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pass in the table. I'm going to get the number of rows in the table, I'm going to loop through each of the rows, and then I'm going to do the update statement. In this case, I'm setting first name equal to first name, last name to the last name, city equal to the city, based on the EMPNO that gets passed in. So in this case, I need to make sure that I actually don't change EMPNO. Okay, and so I'm doing the same thing for delete, except in this case, I'm deleting, and then, so here it is again, number of rows, looping through. And then for staff lock, what I'm doing is I am actually just going again through each of the rows for the, for the, um, for the lock. And I'm just doing something to the table to cause it to be locked. And so now I'm going to end this package body. And now I'm ready to go. So I've already compiled these. So let me go off and I'm going to create a new form. So I'm going to come to my nav object navigator. I'm going to say file new form. I'm going to go to data blocks. I'm going to right click and do data block wizard. Bring up the wizard and say that now in this case I'm going to instead of saying that I'm using a table or view, I'm using a stored procedure and I click next. Now I got to type in the name of the stored procedure. Now, this is not nearly as fun as tables where you can just uh, hit a button and get a list of your tables. You've got to type these in and you've got to type them in correctly. So in this case, I've created staff package dot staff query. And when I hit enter, it's going to say, please select the columns I want. So those are the columns and these are um, 
corresponding to what I created in the package declaration. So now I want to move all these items to the target. And then down here in the argument table, one of the things I need to do is go colon empno because that's the primary key. So in this case, I am, when I do my query, I'm going to do my query based on the primary key field. Okay, and then I click next. Okay, so now it says enter the procedure to insert data for your data block. So in this case, I'm going to do staff package again and then staff insert. And trust me, if you get these wrong, you'll know pretty quickly. Okay, and so it took it, and now it says um, enter procedure to update data. So in this case, it's staff package dot staff update. And then it says enter a procedure to, for deleting data. And I'm going to go staff package dot staff delete. And now the, the last and final one, which is stat, the lock, which is staff package staff lock. Okay, so now it, it, there's a little more work, obviously, to doing this than there was using a uh, block from a table. But now I create my data block name, and I'm just going to leave it as block2. I'm going to create the data block and then call the layout wizard. And now I've got my layout wizard. I'm just going to go through this real fast. I'm going to put all the fields on the form. And I'm going to make it a form function. And now I have my block created from a stored procedure. So let me go ahead and run this. OK, so now I've got my form up. And the first thing I've got to do, I've got no data in there yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put employee number one. Put myself and my city Chicago. So when I save this, I'm actually going to be executing the staff insert function. Now keep in mind, if I was if I was inserting record data into multiple tables, it, that's where some of the power comes comes in is my ability to do some creative things on the insert trigger. So I'm going to hit save. And it says, transaction complete, one record applied or saved. So now I want to query that record that I just created. Now this is a little different because I can only query now here on the primary key because that's the only uh, thing that I linked back to my um, staff query function. So now I'm going to hit 1, execute query, and it brought up the data. And it did that by executing the staff query and now that I've inserted and queried a uh, record, that's really the basics to this. If I if I wanted to go in and change the record, I would use it would use the staff update function. If I wanted to delete the record, it would use the staff um, delete record or function. So this is the basics of how you would link a stored procedure into your um, Oracle Forms data block. So it's more complicated because it needs to be. But at the same time, it's much more powerful than using a table as the, uh, as the basis for your data block.